It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West Blood Money. <laughs> It was good to be heading home, even though the Bar 20 was a rugged hundred miles to the south, across a stretch of desert even the rats had forsaken. The Rodeo in Eagle City had been a whopping success, and the effects of it still lingered in the muscles and reminded a man he was only second best when it came to calling a steer's bluff. Oh, oh, my back. Ooh. Hoppy. What is it, California? Do you mind if I act like a human being and say I'm plumb ready to give out? Oh. Oh, my stomach. <laughs> I thought it was your back. It's both. <laughs> my back's so tired I can hardly keep the saddle. And my stomach's so empty, it feels like I swallowed a couple of gopher holes. <laughs> well, it won't be much longer now, California. We'll rest at Tim Bartlett's ranch for an hour or two, and maybe Tim's wife can rustle up some grub for us. Well, if she can't, there's going to be one less horse in the world. <laughs> uh, this Tim Bartlett must be an all-fired good friend of yours, Hoppy, if you're willing to go 25 miles out of your way to see him. He is. Tim and I were cow folks together back when we were cutting our eye teeth. Haven't seen him in nearly two years. Hope he's still living in Twin Bluffs. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder if there is a Twin Bluffs. This shortcut through the hills just seems to be taking us further and further from civilization. Can't be far away now. Just tighten your belt and make believe you're... Wait. Look there. Mm. Down there by the river. You see anything peculiar? Well, can't say, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a man a digging. Now, what do you suppose he'd be digging for up here in the hills? Oh, search me. Okay, we've seen a man digging. Now, let's go. California, wait. Hmm? Something mighty strange about this. He must have dug quite a hole in the amount of dirty shoving it back in. Wish we were close enough to get a good look. Is that a suitcase he's coming? Oh, Hoppy, if you knew how dead blame hungry I am. Now he's coming the hole up again. Seems to be in an awful hurry, too. He's in no more of a hurry than I am. Hoppy, please. Okay, California. I guess it's none of our business. Mighty peculiar, though. If you had as much appetite as you had curiosity, we'd both be full by now. There he goes, riding off up the trail. Sure isn't a powerful rush. Well, come on. We can't be far from Twin Bluffs. Well, I hope not, because if we are, I'm going to... Wait. Oh, now what? Pull up a minute. Look down there. Somebody else just rode up and stopped where that man was digging. Oh, maybe they was together and no, got lost. No, this fellow's getting down. Look, he's starting to dig, too. Hmm. Them twin bluffers are the diggingest critters I ever seen. He seems to be digging right where the other fellow was. Sure. See? He's going after what's buried. Yeah, you're right. Now, why do you suppose he... Uh-oh. A shot. And it got that fellow. Come on. <laughs> Here, California, help me roll him over. Well, he's still alive. Easy now. Why, it's... it's Tim! What? Uh, you mean the fellow we was on our way to see? Yeah, he's still breathing, but he's in bad shape. We've got to get him into town right away. What's in the suitcase? Uh, I didn't open it. Uh, here, we'll see. Well, I'll be hogtied. Empty! <laughs> Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and Blood Money. On the way home from the Rodeo in Eagle City, Hoppy in California see an unidentified man burying something in the ground and ride away. Then a second man rides onto the scene and is shot. 
The man turns out to be Hoppy's friend, Tim Bartlett, and is badly wounded. The object buried turns out to be a suitcase, an empty suitcase. Hoppy and California are now seeking information in the Golden Nugget. Yes, gents, what'll it be? A little information, bartender. Can you tell us how to get to Tim Bartlett's ranch? Bartlett? Well, sorry, I've only been in Twin Bluffs a couple of weeks. Don't believe I can help you. Well, maybe some of the boys can. Maybe. And you fellas know where Tim Bartlett's place is? <laughs> Who wants to know about the Bartlett place? I do. Who are you? Name's Cassidy. What's that got to do with it? We'll see. Uh, this here Sheriff Simmons, gents. Don't they give the sheriff a badge in this town? I take it off when I play poker. Uh, Makes the boys more comfortable. You know Tim Bartlett? I did. Tim's dead. He mm -hmm. died in the doctor's office not 15 minutes ago. Dead? That's right. He was shot up in the hills. My partner and I brought him in. We seen it happen with our own eyes. Hey, boss, did you hear that? Tim Bartlett was shot dead. Was Tim Bartlett was dead. Who shot him, mister? I don't know. We were too far away to see. You sure? What do you mean by that? I mean, it don't sound right to me when a couple of strangers come into town carrying a man's body and say they saw it happen but don't know who done it. Well, that's the way it was. It sure was. You can take our word for it. Why should I? Look, Sheriff, I don't blame you for being suspicious, but I've been a friend of Tim Bartlett's for years. I'd be obliged if you'd direct me to his ranch so I can break the news to his widow. Yeah? Well, just don't try to leave town in a hurry, stranger, or you and your friend might end up being permanent residents in this town. Awful permanent. Thanks for your friendly advice. Let's finish this hand, boys. Looks like I got a little business to take care of. Mm, nice, pleasant sort of fella. Just a little tip, gents. Don't try to pull any fast ones on Sheriff Simmons. You a friend of his? Nobody's got a friend in this town. You know, you look familiar. Sure we haven't met somewhere before? I don't reckon. Like I said, I'm a stranger in these parts. Yeah, I know. I must have you confused with someone else. Looks that way, stranger. Just remember what I told you about the sheriff. Yeah, he looks like a hard man. With a deck of cards, that is. Come on, California. <laughs> no, 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 Madge. You gotta get a grip on yourself. Tim would want it that way. Well, I know, Uncle Harry. But he was everything to me. Everything. Sure he was, Madge. But Mr. Peters is right. You've got to act in a way Tim would be proud of. I just can't understand it. Why would anyone want to kill Tim? It was Uncle Harry who was threatened. You mentioned that before. Would you mind explaining? Uh, uh, maybe I'd better do it, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, about six months ago, my uh, doctor in Brooklyn advised me to move to a western climate for my health. Mm -hmm. Well, I was uh, practically penniless. But I remembered that I had a nephew out here in Twin Bluffs, although I'd never seen him. So uh, I wrote to him and uh, explained the story, and Tim sent me the money to come west. Uh, I just got here a week ago. But the threat Madge mentioned, uh, what was that? Oh, uh, a letter that uh, came yesterday. Uh, here, you can read it for yourself. Unless you leave $5,000 in cash underneath Hangman's Oak by midnight Thursday, you'll be hanging from the tree on Friday. Yeah, and in case you've forgotten... Uh... Today is Thursday. But I thought you said you had no money, Mr. Peters. I don't. Why, Tim even bought my cigars for me. I think we should do what the letter says and see what happens. Yeah, but uh, how can we? I, I haven't got a penny to my name and, and no way of getting it. I don't mean to use actual money. We'll fake it. Wrap some newspapers in a package and put it under Hangman's Oak. Tonight at 12, we'll have the sheriff and a posse wait <laughs> I'm warning you, Cassidy. If you got me out here to Hangman's Oak on a wild goose chase, I'm going to be mighty unhappy. I can't guarantee anything, Sheriff. All I know is what the letter said. How many people know about it? Just you, Madge, Mr. Peters, and myself. I didn't even tell my partner. I figured the fewer people who knew what we were up to, the better. I'm glad to see you used your head. Now, wait. There's someone coming. Why, oh, it's Mr. Peters. He's putting a package under the tree, and then he'll ride off and sneak back here to join us. We'll wait 15 minutes, no more. There he goes. <laughs> I think there was a witch behind him riding a broom. I said 15 minutes, Cassidy. Yeah.
buggy. Get ready. Pull in those reins. Put up your hands. Uh, this is a hold-up. I'm warning you. I have... Uh, oh, Sheriff. And Mr. Cassidy. Evening, Doc. Kind of late for a buggy ride, isn't it? Yeah. What's the idea, Doc? What are you doing up here? I'm on my way to see a patient. Wasn't able to get away until now. There ain't nobody living up here in the hills, and you know it. Well, Fred caught his kid down in the valley. I'm afraid he's got the measles. I'm taking a shortcut through the hills. Now, look, if you don't believe Nobody me, said they don't believe you, Doc. Yeah. All right, go ahead. But make sure you go all the way to Carter's place. Of course. What is this, anyway? Just a little precaution, Doc. Sorry to have bothered you. Well, that's all right. Rip, rip, rip. Hope you find whoever you're looking for. Good night. Night, Doc. Well, Cassidy, five minutes more. <laughs> Listen, someone coming. Psst, Mr. Cassidy, are you there? It's Peters. Right here, Peters. Hi. Oh, thought maybe I'd lost you. Ooh, this place gives me the shivers. Throw away that cigar. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was just so nervous. Uh, any sign yet? No, and if you ask me, there ain't going to be. Time's up, Cassidy. And like I warned you, I'm mighty unhappy. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I hope we might be able to... Wait. Did you hear that? Yeah, there, there, there's someone coming, all right. You got your guns ready? Don't worry. Quiet now. All right. When I give the word, move in fast. Now, stand where you are or we'll shoot. Uh, what the... Drop that gun, mister. Now turn around and face the moonlight so we can see what you look like. Why, oh, sure. California. Oh, hello, Hoppy. You sort of surprised me. Yeah, so I reckon. You better hand over that package. Hey, what is this? Ain't that your partner, Cassidy? Yes, Sheriff. I'm sorry to say he is. Or was. You just couldn't resist it, could you, California? Oh, I'm sorry, Hoppy. I, I tried. It just weren't no use. I, I kept thinking of all the things I'd be able to do with that money. And... I reckon one of you'd better start explaining what this is all about and fast. I think I can explain it, Sheriff. We didn't tell California about our plan tonight for good reason. I don't mind saying this isn't the first time he's caused trouble like this. No, Hoppy. It... it might interest you to know the only things in that bundle are pieces of newspaper. What? You mean there's no money? That's right. You took a big gamble and lost. Well, I'll be... There's no... something else we ought to get settled now, too. Mr. Peters. Huh? I think it's time you told us the truth about the money. Well, well, what are you talking about? I, I told you I was broke. Yeah, I know you did. But Tim Bartlett told me he'd seen you stuffing several large stacks of bills under a floorboard in your room. What? He didn't say anything about it to you at the time because he wanted to see how long you'd continue to sponge off of him and why. Well, that's a lie. I, I'm broke. I tell you, I ain't got a penny. Shall we all go back to the ranch and have a look under the floorboards in your room? Well, I'd... <sighs> Uh, all right, I might as well admit it. I I got $8,000 there. Well. Yeah, it's my, it's, it's my life savings. You see, back east, everybody was always hounding me for money. I, I never had any peace. So I thought I could start over out here, pretend I was broke, and not be pestered. You see, California, the money was right there in the house all the time. You could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. Well, there ain't no use in hanging around here any longer. I'll take this crook in and put him where he belongs. Oh, but Hoppy, you ain't gonna let him do this to me, are you? Sorry, California, you asked for it. Maybe this is just the thing you needed. Stop gabbing and get moving. Cassidy, I'd feel better if you rode up in front with him, or I can keep an eye on both of you. Whatever you say, Sheriff. Let's go, California. Well, Hoppy, how'd I do? Fine, California. You even had me believe in you. <laughs> Just don't forget, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I don't want to set up housekeeping in the town jail. Don't worry, this is all part of a plan. And it won't take long, because if we're going to pull it off, there's no time to lose. <laughs> Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and Blood Money. It's 8 o'clock the following evening. 
Moonlight shines through the bars of the Twin Bluffs jail, revealing California Carlson fidgeting in his tiny, damp cell. California. Psst. California. Hmm? Who, who, who's there? It's Hoppy. Come to the window. Oh, go away. I don't know you. Stop acting like a child and come to the window. Fine, pal, you are. Thought you were going to get me out of here. I am, but we can't rush things. How are you? I'm dying of an acute case of empty stomach. <laughs> but I ain't asking for sympathy. All I want's food. You ain't going to leave me in this flea bag, are you? Just for a little while longer. This act of yours has already helped to throw the real crook off the trail. Well, all right. But I ain't the type to be a jailbird. Uh, by the way, I had another visitor tonight. Who? That bartender, the fellow you thought you knew from someplace. What did he want? Well, darn if I know. Feller ain't much of a talker. He just give me this envelope to give to you. Envelope? Yeah. What is it, Hoppy? Well, I'll be... I knew I'd seen that hombre somewhere. Who? There isn't time to explain right now. I'm on my way to keep an important date. Well, there's one more thing, Hoppy. Uh, a few minutes ago, just after the bartender had left, I heard the sheriff telling one of his deputies to go get that bartender and bring him in. Sounded like he wanted him real bad. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Real bad. I'd better be on my way. Shake, California? Shake, partner. I'll just tighten my belt, but I'm down to the last notch. <laughs> See you later. It's a beautiful night, isn't it, Uncle Harry? Yeah, it sure is, Madge. That moonlight shining here in the garden sure makes a pretty sight. If only Tim could be here to share it with us. Oh, now, Madge, no need to wish things like that. You've been a brave girl. I admire you. Thank you, Uncle Harry. You're sweet. Uncle Harry! Oh, what's that? What's what, Uncle Harry? Uh, didn't, you, didn't you hear that voice? I didn't hear anything. It must have been a coyote. Uncle Harry! There, there it is again, and, and it's no coyote. What do you suppose? Look! Why, Uncle Harry, what's the matter? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. It is a ghost. Can't you see it? Look, there in the tree. It's Tim! Tim? But that's absurd. I don't see anything. But you must. He, he's there, I tell you. Just his face shining through the darkness. Uncle Harry. There, there it is again. You're imagining things. We'd better go in the house. Uncle Harry. Go away. No. Go away. Leave me alone. Hey, did, did you hear that? The, those leaves rustled. It, it might have been the breeze. No, I don't feel no breeze. Well, there's one way of finding out. I, I'm going to put some lead up there. No. Don't shoot, Uncle Harry. Please don't shoot. Well, why not? I... Hey, what's the matter with you? A minute ago, you said it was just my imagination. Well, maybe you're not imagining it. Maybe it really is a ghost. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out. Here, you stand in front of me. What are you doing? Just providing myself with a little protection there. Eh? Now, you up there in the tree. If you're a human being, I'm giving you a chance to come down. If you're something else, a little thing like a bullet won't bother you. Now, which is it going to be? Tim, Tim, you've got to come down. Mm. All right, I'll Looks like you've got the upper hand. Well, 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 wait a minute. Don't come no closer. Don't worry. It's me, all right. In the flesh. Oh, Tim, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I spoil things. It's all right, Madge. I guess it was a crazy idea. There was just a chance it might work. Oh, cut the chatter. Now, oh, what's going on here, anyway? I thought that I... I thought that you was dead. You thought you'd killed me. Is that what you were going to say, Uncle Harry? Well, is it? Well, since this gun is cocked, I'll answer the questions. Now, out with it. How did you get here? Yeah, it's very simple. When Hopalong Cassidy brought me into the doctor's office yesterday, we decided to let people think I was dead. Go on talking. Not much more to tell. We staged this little scene here tonight, hoping we'd be able to frighten you into confessing. If only I hadn't spoiled things. But I was afraid... Hey, what's that stuff you got on your face? Alkali, mixed with some chemical the doc gave us. <laughs> so you thought you'd scare me, huh? Well, it looks like your Uncle Harry was a little too smart for you. You may as well drop the pretense now. I know you're not my Uncle Harry. Uh, you're a pretty smart guy, ain't you? What did you do with my uncle? Oh, we was on the stagecoach together. He found out too much, the nosy old fool. So you killed him and became Harry Peters? Sure, why not? And then you tried to kill me, because I saw you putting that money under the floorboards. You got nosy, too, just like your uncle. But someone else knows your secret. Nobody but you and your wife. Stand over there with your husband, Madge. No. You can't do this. You can't shoot us in cold blood. <laughs> you had it all figured out, didn't you, Bartlett? Well, it won't do you no good because the secret is going to die with you. 
right now. Tim! Tim, are you all right? All right, Hoppy. You fired just in time. I didn't fire that shot. You didn't? Well, then... Listen. Yeah, we had an uninvited guest. How about the old man? He's... He's dead. Uh, you stay here with Madge. Whoever fired that shot must have been afraid of something else the old man was going to say. I think I know who it was. I'm going after him. Be careful, Hoppy. Don't you want me to come with you? No, thanks. It's time you two had a reunion without a third party around. See you later. All right, Cassidy. Stop where you are. And keep your saddle or you'll get a dose of lead. Well, Sheriff Simmons, just like you to give a man a sporting chance. Never mind the wisecracks. Drop your guns to the ground. Anything to oblige the law. Nice of you to meet me here at Hangman's Oak, Cassidy. It'll make it real handy. Handy for what? For a hanging. I've got a rope here that'll make a perfect tie for that neck of yours. Like this. <clears throat> you work fast, don't you, Simmons? Too bad you had to find out the hard way, Cassidy. Now move your horse along under that tree. Easy. I wouldn't want you to hang yourself before I got the chance to do it for you. I suppose you got a good reason for going to all this trouble. Yeah. I hate meddlers. You didn't really think you'd fool me with that act you and your partner put on up here last night, did you? Why shouldn't I? Don't play dumb, Cassidy. It's too late. I was outside the cell tonight when you were talking to your pal, California. Clever stunt you boys pulled. But it won't do you any good now. I'm the one who's clever, in case you're interested. So you're the one who shot the old man Peter just now? Yeah, the old fool. And I'm the one who sent him that letter asking for the 5000 I got a notice from the U.S. Marshal last week, complete with picture, saying to be on the lookout for the old guy. He was wanted for murder. And you saw a chance to pick up some easy money. Sure. With him being a fugitive from the law, he wouldn't dare make a squawk. Why didn't you take him last night, then? Because there was still a chance I could frighten the old boy into sharing some of his money. But you and Bartlett had to go nosing into it. You bet we did. I'll deal with him after I've taken care of you. Anything more you want to say? Nothing, except I'm glad to know I was right. I pegged you for a skunk the first time I laid eyes on Why, you... you... You wouldn't care to take this rope off my neck and do that again, would you? I'm not wasting any more time with you, Cassidy. I'm throwing this rope over the limb of that tree. <coughs> now, get ready. I'm going to count to three. Then I'll give your horse a kick. From then on, you'll be out on a limb. <laughs> I sort of like that. Your sense of humor fits your personality, Simmons. That's the last wise crack you'll ever make, Cassidy. Get ready to swing. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. I'm starting to count, Cassidy. I'll go to three. One. Two. Three. Hold it, Simmons. Don't move. Hey, what the? Look out! Oh, oh, nice shooting if I ever seen it. You all right, Hoppy? I'm all right, California, but that's as close to dying as I ever want to come. I'm sure glad we weren't five minutes late. You're glad. What about me, Marshal? <laughs> oh, so you did recognize me. Sorry to keep up that bartender act with you. It wasn't until California gave me your note that I pegged you as the U.S. Marshal I met in Carson City. I had to send you that note, Cassidy, and warn you to look out for the sheriff. But how'd you know the sheriff and I were up here at Hangman's Tree? Well, the uh, marshal was obliging enough to come get me out of jail. Yeah, and then we hurried over to Tim Bartlett's ranch, and they told us you'd ridden off after the murderer. Well, I guess that's the end for this crooked sheriff. Uh, see, Marshal, I, yeah? I was wondering, just out of curiosity, you understand, if there's a reward for this capture. California. Well, Hoppy, I... Maybe we can arrange something, California. Yeah? Here's the bag of money the old man hid under the floorboards. Help yourself. Hmm? Uh, you mean it? Sure, reach in and take a handful. Well, now, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Whee! Ain't that pretty? Oh, boy. I'll just take the rest back to headquarters as evidence. And then we'll burn it. Huh? Burn it? Yeah. I guess I forgot to tell you the old man wasn't just wanted for murder. 
He also happened to be the slickest counterfeiter east of the Rockies. You, 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 you mean... Uh, <laughs> oh, shucks. That's what you get for being so greedy, California. From now on, you'd better limit your appetite to food. <laughs> This means it's so long from Hoppy in California once again. They're riding back to the Bar 20 now to tell all the other waddies of the exciting little escapade you just heard. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppies, don't forget you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, we're hoping you'll tune in next time Hopalong rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Blood Money was written by Robert Burdick. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>